Hey everyone, my name is Asani Pettiford. I am an infidelity recovery specialist and the co-founder of Couples Academy. And I want to talk to you today about the 10 most common mistakes that unfaithful partners make in the recovery process. And I think it's very important that we take the time to really listen to what's happening because oftentimes we're doing things and don't realize that we're causing more harm than actually good. We have our own thinking and justifications and rationalizations for the things that we do. Uh, and we have good intentions sometimes, but as they say, the road to hell has been paved with good intentions. So once you gain a clear understanding and knowledge of how to go about doing the right things, it will significantly aid you in your recovery process. So let's quickly go through the list. Number one, not supporting your partner's recovery. You know, the reality is the pain that has been caused in the relationship as the unfaithful partner, we want to get through this thing as fast as possible. We don't want to prolong the pain. We don't want to be forced to deal with what we have done because of shame and guilt and just being reminded of what we've done can sometimes be very disheartening and so we want to race through the process but we don't realize that the recovery process is an individual journey and just as we're trying to get out of our pain our spouse is trying to get out of his or her pain as well but sometimes that process can be a much slower process and we're tempted oftentimes to say you know what just get over it as if it's easy to just get over I remember being on a television interview a number of years ago and I was working with a couple who had just been impacted by the pain of infidelity and the boyfriend was not sensitive to the pain that the girlfriend was going through and would simply say just get over it already and so I had to explain to him how it wasn't so easy to do so and I gave him this example and I said listen I said if I ball up my fist and punch you in the face and knock you down to the ground it will create a physical wound and it may take you two hours or possibly two days to get over the pain but if I do something in the relationship that causes an emotional wound it may take two months to two years to overcome that pain emotional wounds are a lot harder to heal and so it's important that you have a sensitivity to an understanding of and a high level of patience when it comes to the recovery process of your partner because your insensitivity can make matters significantly worse. The second biggest common mistake that many unfaithful partners make is leaking out information over time. In essence, they're trying to control the flow of the information. In their mind, they feel like this information may do more harm than good, may set my partner back, and it is not information that I want to get out there because it's going to cause more hurt and more harm. And so what we try to do as we do reveal information, we it, it, think about a Band-Aid. When you're, when you're taking a Band-Aid off, sometimes we may slowly peel that Band-Aid off of a scab. But what happens is as you slowly peel it off, you're pulling on your skin and possibly ripping hairs out of your skin. So the slower you do it, the more painful the process is. As opposed to just ripping that sucker off, there's an immediate shock, but the pain is short-lived and it goes away. And oftentimes when we're releasing information, it becomes a very slow, painful process. And what happens is we say, listen, I've told you everything. And then all of a sudden, a week later, another truth comes out. But it, I've told you everything. And about a month later, another truth comes out. And you're slowly leaking this information, which is causing more pain, because in essence, you're forcing your partner to relive the, spe the experience all over again. So it's almost like the thoughts and the emotions begin to flood their body, and the wounds that were once created have just been reopened, and they're just as raw today as they were the moment that they were created. And so if you try to pace things out, you're actually doing more harm than good. So the key is dealing with everything in the moment and letting it all out. I'd rather deal with the pain one time for a period of time than allow it to drip all throughout the course of the relationship because at some point a person may lose their desire to continue to fight because they feel as if, what, what, what else don't I know? What's waiting for me around the corner? What am I going to discover tomorrow? So it creates more pain ultimately. So tell the truth now in its fullness so that you can quickly get over this particular phase. Number three, being defensive oftentimes 
when we are entering into full disclosure and questions are asked and answers have to be given, sometimes the unfaithful partner can become very defensive. And it's just like, well, wait a minute, why are you being defensive? I'm the one who's hurt. I'm the one who's gone through the pain, but yet you're building up this huge wall and you're defending yourself as if I'm attacking you. And maybe there is somewhat of an attack in the disposition and the approach of your hurt partner, but they're hurting. And the last thing they need for you to do is build up a defense and put on armor and to protect yourself. In essence, what you should be doing is protecting the hurt partner. And so the more defensive you are and the more unwilling you are to participate in this process, what it does is it reinforces the fear that your partner may have about moving forward. Uh, it reinforces an idea that maybe this is not going to work. And if you're holding on to dear life, to these truths and to this information, and you're so defensive, what are you hiding? What are you not telling me? What is it that I don't know? So you want to be as open as possible and sensitive to the partner in terms of what they're going through and allow the process to naturally take course so that healing can be found. Number four, here's a big problem that oftentimes unfaithful partners have. And that is believing everything the hurt partner says. Let me tell you something. During the time of discovery and disclosure is probably one of the most painful times that you could ever go through. There's literally an emotional roller coaster that you and your partner are going in. So in the midst of that process, there may be a whole lot of hurtful words. And a lot of times the words that are spoken are full of venom. But a lot of that venom is a result of pain that that hurt partner is feeling. And oftentimes their attitude and approach is, well, because you've hurt me, now I'm going to redirect the pain that I feel back on you. And oftentimes it comes in the form of words. And so in that process, you may be called out of your name. There may be profanity. There may be harsh words. There may be demeaning words. And so oftentimes it could set you back and impact your ego. The reality is you have to know the root of the dialogue and know that pain is on the other side of those words. And when you begin to empathize and have a sensitivity to what they're going through, you won't take those words so personal. So don't pay attention to every word that is said. Oftentimes, the hurt partner will say, I'm done, it's over, I don't want this anymore, but they're speaking out of their pain. Oftentimes, they're in a state of confusion. They may not quite know what they want to do, but it seems as though they're very absolute in what they do when you hear their words. Don't pay attention to every word and know that this is a process and you have to have a high level of endurance and stick to itivism to make it through this phase. Number five, here's a huge no-no. Unfaithful partners have a tendency to defend the affair partner. It is very natural for the hurt partner, the betrayed partner, to want to demonize the affair partner. And so typically you'll hear words like slut and trick and whore and all types of other words. But amongst that home wrecker, uh, and so oftentimes their character is diminished. They are demonized and made 100% responsible for the demise of their relationship. This other man or other woman who's come in and destroyed the foundation of your relationship. And so oftentimes as the unfaithful partner, you realize that no, it was a two way street. And what, what you typically do is you'll come to the defense and come to the aid of the affair partner. And even though what you're saying may be true and what they're saying may be untrue, the worst thing that you could ever do is try to defend the affair partner. Why? Because that reinforces the idea and the notion in the hurt partner's mind that here you go choosing her again over me. Oh, so you want to defend her instead of defending me. You want to protect her instead of protecting me. And at that moment, it's all about whose perceived side that you are on. And when you protect the affair partner by defending them, you're choosing their side in leaving your spouse or leaving your partner out to dry. So never, ever, ever, ever defend the affair partner. Even if the temptation is there, shut that down. Come to the aid of your partner and reinforce your love, your support, your commitment to your spouse. Number six. Avoiding talking about your partner's feelings. You know, a lot of times the unfaithful partner may feel like, you know what, this is just dragging out too long, too far. Can we just put it to rest? 
there's a tendency of the hurt partner to want to have a conversation again and again and again and again, perhaps thousands of times, or asking the same question a thousand different ways to gain clarity, to gain understanding, to gain truth, to get that aha moment, to have a sense of closure. And oftentimes the betrayed partner does not show the level of care and sensitivity to what their partner is going through. The fact of the matter is, as much as you may hear your partner bring up the affair, they probably think about it a whole lot more than they speak about it. So if you're hearing it every day, could you imagine the mental torture that the uh, betrayed partner is going through in their mind? They don't always speak to every situation, but they get to a point where they have to release and who better to deal with the details of the affair than the one who was involved in it. And so sometimes it's an attempt on their part to vent and to let it out, but sometimes it's for the purpose of gaining further clarity. And the more patient you are in having those conversations again and again and again, it shows a sense of compassion and care. But what I would recommend you do, take out a cell phone, Use the power of technology, because oftentimes if you know you're about to engage in a serious conversation, press that record device on your phone, record the conversation, and allow your partner to gain clarity by listening to the conversation a thousand times, so you don't have to have the same conversation a thousand times. Because with every time they listen to it, they're going to hear something different. They hear something different because they become someone different. We only retain 10% of what we hear. And so oftentimes as the uh, unfaithful partner may be explaining something, they may lock in on a particular part of the answer or a particular part of the conversation and miss everything else. And so therefore the couple goes back into a tug of war about what was said and what wasn't said. The reality is you don't hear everything that was said in the moment. And so replaying the tape and listening to it again and again and again, it allows you to come up with better, more intelligent questions and allows that conversation to move in a forward direction. It helps you to get to the final destination of clarity and closure. Number seven, here's a big thing that uh, unfaithful partners do that really can set uh, the relationship back. And that is when you point out the flaws of your partner or point out the flaws or the problems within the relationship. And though what you have to say can be extremely valid because no one's perfect, uh, oftentimes it's perceived as a bad justification, okay, for what you have done. Well, the reason why I wasn't faithful is because you were X, Y, Z. Or the reason why I cheated is because this is what we were dealing with in the relationship. And, and, and the reality is you have to take 100% ownership for what you've done. Yes, there were situations and conditions and an environment that was created in the relationship that created a vulnerability for an affair to occur, but you have to take 100% responsibility for your actions. Because just because you were unfaithful, it doesn't mean another couple in the same exact situation will respond by being unfaithful. So there was something inside of you that caused that to be the reaction. That's what you have to begin to deal with. Because everybody shows up very differently. So rather than taking the time to point out in, the, in that moment your partner's faults and flaws and all the issues in the relationship, uh, take in what is being said balancing out with truth, of course. And so taking responsibility for what you've done moves you forward instead of setting you back. Number eight, a big no-no is continuing to tell lies. See, this is where we get in trouble. Many of us justify our dishonesty. In fact, there are three typical reasons why many people are dishonest. Number one, we are dishonest because we're trying to avoid uh, the pain that our partner may experience if the truth comes out. We've already hurt them. We don't want to hurt them again. So what we'll do is we'll omit information, we'll redirect, we'll deceive, we'll flat out lie to avoid the pain that we don't want them to, to experience. Uh, number two, the reason why many people are dishonest is because they're trying to avoid the consequences 
of what may happen if the truth comes out. So if I tell you the truth, there's a fear that the relationship is over, you may want to divorce, you may want to leave, and so that's not something that I can bear, and so therefore I'm going to lie and deceive in order to hold on to what it is that I truly desire, and that's you. The third reason why people are dishonest is because they're just compulsive liars. They lie about everything. The reality is most people fit into the first two categories, not so much the third one. And so whatever your reason, motivation, or rationalization is for being dishonest, I have to tell you, it's not working and it won't work. And whatever you lie about today, the truth will come out tomorrow. And so what that does, it reinforces for your partner why they cannot trust you, why they should not trust you, and for some, why they will not trust you again. Honesty is the best policy. Radical honesty is the best policy. That is when you are open and honest about your past, about your present, about your future. And as painful as the truth may be, the fact is the truth also heals. And so if you lie for a good reason in your mind, if you justify the reason behind why you refuse to tell the truth, it will do more harm than good. And it reminds them of the fact that you are the same person today that you were when you were cheating. Because when you were cheating, you were lying and you're still lying today. So how do I know and how can I believe that you're not cheating? Why? Because you say so? I'm still catching you in lies. And so if you want to prove that you're a different person and that lifestyle and that behavior is no longer a part of who you are, then everything that was attached to the behavior, like lies, like deception, like secrecy, like dishonesty, all of those things have to be removed as well. Number nine, not answering all of your spouse's questions. Let me tell you something. <laughs> if there's anything you can do to destroy the potential of restoring your marriage, it's refusing to answer questions. Because now, the feeling is, well, okay, you, you don't want to answer that? Okay, well, what else aren't you telling me? What else don't I know? The last thing it does is reinforce the ability to trust. In fact, what it does do is reinforce the reason as to why I cannot trust you. And if I can't trust you, then there's really no reason to be moving forward. And so when you refuse to answer the questions because you think the information is too painful, you have to understand, everybody is wired differently. Some people are wired to know, wired to have to know every single nook and cranny of everything. Other people rather not know because the information may be too painful for them. So you cannot determine what it is that your partner uh, should want to know. Maybe for you, knowing all this information wouldn't work, but maybe for your partner, Knowing all this information allows them to heal, to find closure, and to move forward. So having conversations about the motive and the reason as to why they need to know certain things would be good before sharing that information and testing it out, right? Now, the initial reaction probably will be one of hurt and pain. That's the fact. That's just the reality. But you have to look at the big picture, okay? If we're moving forward, we need to realize that it's not a straight line. Oftentimes, on our way forward, there may be times where we take three steps forward, two steps back. Two steps forward, five steps back. But we're moving in the zigzag type of uh, flow, but we ultimately get to our final destination. And so you just need to realize that that is a part of the process. And so honesty is the best policy and sharing everything is the key to your success. Number 10 of the top 10 most common mistakes that uh, unfaithful partners make is not keeping your commitments and agreements that you've made with your spouse. Oftentimes, uh, unfaithful partners are very inconsistent in what it is that they've promised to do. The worst thing you could do is make a promise and not honor it. Because now we're dealing with an integrity issue. We're dealing with character flaws. And here we go again. You were unfaithful, which was a flaw, and now you won't even honor your own agreement and promise, which is a flaw. I can't trust you. I can't trust this. I can't move forward. You're not who I think you are. And so when you do not show consistency in your behavior, it sets your partner back. At the end of the day, the, the question is, why should they trust you? 
because you say that you're truthful, because you've had a good deed or two. No, trust is earned over time, and it is earned as they observe your patterns of consistency, as they observe you honoring the commitments that you've made. And guess what? Even when you don't think they're looking, even when you think they forgot, they remember. Oh yeah, and they're observing you. So you're always on stage. You're always in the spotlight. And so you want to make sure that even when your partner's not around, you're operating in complete integrity. Because when you don't think that they're observing you, oh, best believe, they're right over your shoulder looking at everything. And so your consistency is one of the keys to your success. These are the top most common mistakes that unfaithful partners make that you have to make a decision not to bring into your restoration process with your spouse.